Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade five, we are working on module two, lesson number seven, and we are connecting our area models and the distributive property to partial products of the standard algorithm with renaming. So this is very much like the work we were doing yesterday. The only differences are that some of the numbers are getting a little longer, and occasionally we have a zero in our problems, which is a little bit of a complication, but actually it makes our work a lot easier. So. Let's get a look at a couple of problems from tonight's homework. I'm going to do one problem that is a full version of an area model and standard, standard algorithm, and then I'll do another one of them that is a word problem. Let's take a look at problem number two. Problem number two asks us to do the following. We are asked to solve by drawing the area model and using the standard algorithm. Okay, well, let's see. First, we have to draw an area model. So this, let's see, we've got 7,481 times 290. And again, usually we would set that up 7,481 times 290. We would set up the smaller product here on the bottom. So I'm going to do the smaller product here on the left-hand side. Let's see. We don't have any ones, though. That's interesting. So really all we have are 90 and 200, right? That's our whole side here. That's 290 broken down by, uh, by our place value. So two hundreds, nine tens, no ones. All right, let's see. Now, for our other part, though, we've got four parts, thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. So let's see. We've got thousands. Let's see. We've got seven thousands, four hundreds, eighty, and one. Now, my big fat fingers are going to need some more space here, so we're going to have to zoom in and zoom out a couple of times. Let's go ahead and start with our area model and see what we can solve. Now, we can solve from either end, but I always like the easiest problems first. So let's look at 90 times 1. 90 times 1 is the easiest one for us. 90 times 1 is simply 90. That's awesome. Let's see. 90 or 9 tens. Oops, sorry. I switched to this. 9 tens times 8 tens. Well, let's see. We, that's going to give us 72 or something. Let's see. What's our place value? Okay, we've got 10 here and 10 here, so that's going to be 100. So I would say that that's 7,200. 72 hundreds, literally. 9 tens times 4 thousands. Well, that's going to be 36. And then, let's see, how many tens do we have in there? Well, we have 2 tens here and 1 ten here, so that's 1, 2, 3 tens. So it must be 36,000. 1, 2, 3. That's right. That's 9 tens times 4 hundreds. And then finally, 9 tens times 7 thousands. Well, 9 times 7 is 63. And then we just, again, have to figure out how many tens are in here. There's 1 ten here. One, two, three, four, four tens. So we're going to bump that out. One, two, three, four place values. Excellent. Wow. So now we have to add all these things up. Holy cow. Unbelievable. Let's see. So we've got, I'm going to just add up, I'm going to do this as mental math. As complicated as this is, I'm going to look at the ones first. No ones, no ones, no ones, no ones equals no ones. Awesome. Tens. Let's see. Nine tens plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, up, oh, nine tens total, awesome. Hundreds, let's see, no hundreds, two hundreds, no hundreds, no hundreds, so it's just two hundreds. Thousands, seven thousand plus six thousand, that's thirteen thousand, and then no more thousands. So thirteen thousand is a three, but we have to remember there's one more, so I'm just going to put a little one up here uh, in the ten thousands, so we'll remember to add it on. Ten thousands, see, no ten thousands, no ten thousands, three ten thousands, and three ten thousands. So that's six ten thousands, plus the one we had there. I'm going to say that that's seven ten thousands. And then finally, hundred thousands, none, 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 and six. So I'm going to say that that first line, that partial product is 673,290 when I add up these four products, right? We've multiplied, we've distributed our 90 times 7,000, times 400, times 80, and times 1. We've taken those four products, added them all together, and we get this number. You know what? Let's see if that's what we get over here on the right-hand side. And we do our standard algorithm. Now, I'm noticing something first, which is normally our process would be we would multiply this digit, right, our 1s times everything. But we already know that 0 times this is 0, 0 times 8 tens is 0, 0 times 4, all 0. So we don't have to really do that. Let's start right here. 9 tens times 1 times 1, 1. Let's see, that's going to be 9. 9 what? 9 tenths. Awesome. Next part. Let's see. We've got 9 tenths times 8 tenths. That's going to be 72, let's see, 72 hundreds. So let's see, 72 hundreds. 200 can go there. 
but the seven's going to need to go in the next space, right? Into the thousands place. So let's go. Nine tens times four hundreds. That's going to be 36, and then it's one, two, three. 36,000 plus 7,000 would be 43,000. Okay, so 3,000. Put four on the line. We'll cross out that seven. All right, let's see. Last one up. Nine tens times seven thousands would be 36. 36 ten thousands? I'm sorry. Nine tens times six thousand would be 63 ten thousands or 630,000, plus four more 10,000s, that'd be 67 10,000s, or 670,000. And you know what? There it is, right? There's our partial product, 673,290. Wow, it's a lot of work to do this problem two different ways. Let's see if the next one is any easier. And the numbers are pretty big, though. I'm, I'm a little worried. Let's see. Two hundreds times one. Well, that's going to be the easiest, right? Two hundred times one is just two hundred. Awesome. Next one. Two hundreds times eight tens. Well, we know we're going to have sixteen. Two times eight is sixteen. And then how many tens do we have? One, two, three tens. One, two, three tens. Like that. Awesome. Two hundreds times four hundred is going to be eight. And then let's see how many how many tens. One, two, three, four tens. One, two, three, four tens. Oops. There you go, 80,000. And then finally, two hundreds times seven thousands. Two times seven is 14. And then how many tens do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Let me do that. One, two, oops, switch to the wrong color. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to draw in our commas here and here. Oof, big number. All right, let's see. Let's add up. Let's see, there's no ones. None, 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 none. There's no tens. Zero, 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 zero. Let's add up the hundreds. Two, zero, zero, zero. That's only 200 overall. Let's see. I'm going to just do that. Two hundreds. How about our thousands? None. Six thousand. None, none. So it's just six thousand. Let's see. Ten thousands. There's one ten thousand there. There's eight ten thousands there. And none here. So that's nine ten thousands. Okay. How about hundred thousands? Let's see, there's none, 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 400,000. And finally, millions. Oh, there's just the one right out here, right? So we've got 1,496,200 is our partial product. <sighs> Let's go over to our standard algorithm and see if we come up with the same numbers here. Let's see. 200s times 1, 1 would be just 200, right? Let's see, next one up. Two hundreds times eight ten, that would be sixteen thousands. So sixteen thousands is a six here and a one under like that. Sixteen thousands. Awesome. Next one up. Two hundred times four hundred would be eight. And then one, two, three, four. So eight ten thousands plus one more ten thousand would be nine ten thousands. We'll use that up. Okay. And then finally, two hundred times 7,000 would be 14, let's see, we 14 hundred thousands, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five zeros, right? Excellent. 14 hundred thousands or 1.4 million. So it's 14 goes right here. And you know what? There it is again. Our partial product, which is just us adding together all of these pieces, when we distributed our 200 times each part of this number, 200 times 7,000, 200 times 400, 200 times 80, 200 times 1, we did all those multiplication problems, added them, added them together to get our partial product, and sure enough, that's what we get. Let's add our partial products together and see if we are done with this one. Let's see. Our 1s, 0 plus 0 is 0. Our 10s, 9 plus 0 is 9. Our hundreds, 2 plus 2 is 400. Our thousands, 3 plus 6 is 9,000. Our 10,000, 7 plus 9 is 16 10,000. We record it like that. 6 plus 4 plus 1 is 11 hundred thousands. And 1 plus 1 is 2, 2. We've used up all those. We've got our two partial products. 2,169,490. Huh. Exhausting. Well, 
I will say it has taken us nine minutes to do this problem. But remember, we're doing this in two different ways. We're doing it as a partial products problem, and we're doing it as a standard algorithm problem. So one of the benefits is that once we're comfortable with the standard algorithm and we, under we understand what it means, we'll be able to just do these problems one way. And I notice that that's part of your homework. As you get on to problem three in tonight's homework, you're just using the standard algorithm. So let's move to the next problem. Let's take a look at problem number five. We're going to use a read, draw, and write strategy for our story problems here. And first part is to read. So let's read. One Saturday at the farmer's market, each of the 94 vendors made $502 in profit. How much profit did all vendors make that Saturday? Well, let's see. So we thought about this as an area model. We would say, well, geez, there's 94 vendors, right? 94 vendors. I can break that down into 94 vendors. And they each made $502. Well, that's kind of hard, but let's see. We don't have any 10s. So I think that's like this, right? $502 each times 94 vendors. So that's how our area model would look. I'm just going to do this, though, as a standard algorithm pr problem. So I'm going to say, if, what if we had $502 for each of 94 vendors? How would that look if, in a standard algorithm? Let's go ahead and do that problem. So we've gone ahead and drawn it. Now let's go ahead and figure out our answer, and then we can write it. Let's see, four ones times two ones would be eight ones. Four ones times zero tens would be zero tens. And four ones times five hundreds would be twenty hundreds. And that's twenty hundreds, right? Not two in the hundreds place, twenty hundreds or two thousand. Okay, let's take a look at the next part. Nine tens times two ones would be eighteen tens. Let's see, so eighteen tens would look like that, right? A hundred eighty or eighteen tens. Next up. 9 tens times 0 tens would be 0, but we've got that 1 right there, so we'll have a total of 1, and we'll mark that as used up. Okay, and then finally, 9 tens times 5 hundreds would be 45, and then 1, 2, 3, 45 thousands, and that's 45 thousands. So let's go ahead and add up our partial products. We'll add up our 1's column. 8 plus 0 is 8. Our 10's column, 0 plus 8, is also 8. Our tens, our hundreds column, 0 plus 1 is 100. Our thousands column, 2 plus 5 is 7,000. And finally, our ten thousands column, it's just 4. And we'll go ahead and add our comma. And we have to newton out the last part. Um, let's see, the vendors, the vendors made $47,188. See. That sounds pretty good. All right. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problem. You know, I'm noticing one last thing here before I say that. Um, one of the things that we would do in our classroom is we would look at this number and this number, and we would just do a quick estimate to see if we were in the right in the right realm. So let me let me see if I can do that quickly. This is if we call this about 90 vendors, right? Not 94 exact vendors, but about 90 vendors. And this was about $500 in, in profit. We would say 9 tens times 5 hundreds. 9 ten times 5 hundreds would be $45,000. And you know what? That's pretty close, right? $45,000, that's close to what we have here. So I'm pretty, ca I'm pretty happy that we've got a, an answer that, uh, that fits, that we've got an answer that's pretty accurate. So, sorry for that little digression, but I just wanted to work in the estimation that we did last week. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.